All right, all right, all right. Let's get started. Happy Easter week, everybody. This is Pastor Steve McKinney from Gateway Mission Assembly in Metro Manila, Philippines, coming to you for our online service, whether this is Good Friday for you or Easter Sunday. Either way, we welcome you to the broadcast. I'm just giving one message for both this week as we have a lot of events going on in the church. I want you to go ahead and turn with me to the book of Numbers chapter 22, and while you turn there. I'm going to say a word of prayer. Father, we love you. We worship you. We adore you. We thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to be the lamb that takes away the sin of the world. We thank you, Jesus, that you gave yourself as the final sacrifice so that we could spend eternity with you and eternity with God the Father. Lord, we love you. We dedicate this time to you. We dedicate our hearts. We dedicate our time. We dedicate our focus to you. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory. And Lord, I pray that your word would penetrate. Your word would not return empty. It would not return void, but it would accomplish the the purpose for which you sent it. We pray these things in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody says, amen. Praise the Lord. All right, guys, the title of my message here today is that if God can use a donkey, he can use me. If God can use a donkey, he can use me. And I know that uh, the book of Numbers is not a traditional uh, Easter message, but I want to go there uh, just to show you a little bit about where this statement comes from. If God can use a donkey, he can use me. Uh, It comes from Numbers chapter 22, and it says in Numbers chapter 22 that that Balaam was on his way to do something that the the Lord didn't like. And there was actually an angel of the Lord with a sword standing in his way that was going to kill him if he passed that way, but Balaam could not see that angel. But the donkey had spiritual eyesight. And so the donkey uh, saved the life of his master, Balaam, and ran off into a field and then and then uh, literally crushed his Balaam's foot against the wall trying to avoid uh, the, the angel who had a sword. That donkey was really doing his best to save the life of his master. But the master ended up beating him on three different occasions. And then we pick it up in verse 28. Then the Lord gave the donkey the ability to speak. So this became a talking donkey, okay, uh, by the power of God. And the donkey says to Balaam, what have I done to you that deserves your beating me three times? It asked Balaam. And then the donkey and Balaam have this conversation. Uh, uh, and, and then Balaam's eyes get open to see the angel. Uh, and then he sees that this donkey was actually saving his life. And I'm sure he apologized to the donkey for beating the donkey when he saved his life. But the purpose uh, of this uh, scripture that I'm sharing with you here today is that many times, spiritually speaking, the Lord has enabled me to say things prophetically that I should not have been able to say. All right. And so what I will say is, well, if the Lord can use a donkey, he can use me. Uh, I I will say something like, wow, you know, I really feel like a donkey right now uh, because I had no idea what I was about to say, but the Holy Spirit filled my mouth. So we use that term in reference to people who are speaking under the power of God in a way that we would normally not be able to speak. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you think that this, this donkey, Balaam's donkey, was able to talk for the rest of its life? I don't think so. I think it could only speak when the Lord enabled it to speak. And that's the way that we often are. But God used donkeys in other ways, not just to speak to the prophet Balaam and to save his life. And you could even say the false prophet Balaam or the the, the for prophet prophet Balaam. Uh, it's an interesting story. We are going to be talking more about that list th- this year. So go ahead and turn with me now to the book of Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, where we're going to be talking about another donkey. And it says here, Rejoice, O people of Zion! Shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem! Look, your king is coming to you! He is righteous and victorious! 
yet he is humble, riding on a donkey, riding on a donkey's colt. Now, what does this mean? Uh, It's talking about Jesus. It's a messianic prophecy. It's saying that Jesus is going to, to come into Jerusalem, the Messiah, but even though he's the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, he's not going to be riding on a horse. Not that time. He will be riding on a horse when he comes back the second time. He's going to be riding on a white horse. But the but when he went into Jerusalem, he went riding on a donkey, which is considered to be a lowly animal. Amen. All right. And it says he's humble, even though he's righteous and victorious. And he is riding on not just a donkey, but riding on a donkey's colt. In other words, a young donkey. Now, this is an amazing thing because donkeys can be ridden, but young donkeys, especially one that has never been ridden yet, cannot be ridden successfully because because they they don't uh, respond well to being ridden and they can really be stubborn and they can even uh, revolt uh, against being ridden and it's it's really an amazing thing that Jesus was able to get on to a donkey that had never been ridden and the peace that was on Jesus came on to that donkey and he was able to ride that donkey with no problem that in and of itself was a miracle but you see guys this was this was a prophecy in Zechariah chapter 9 verse 9 an amazing an amazing prophecy about Jesus Jesus. But we go on to the to the Easter message, and we're going to read from the book, book of Mark, chapter 11, starting at verse 1, and it says this, as Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem, they came to the town of Bethpage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives. Jesus sent two of them on ahead, and he said, go into the village over there, and as soon as you enter it, you will see a young donkey, the, the colt of a donkey, tied there that no one has ever ridden. That's how we know that nobody would ever ridden it untie it and bring it here and if anyone asks what are you doing just say the lord needs it and we'll return it soon so the two disciples left and found the colt standing in the street tied outside the front door just as jesus had said and as they were untying it some bystanders demanded what are you doing untying that colt are you guys trying to steal this colt and they said what jesus had told them to say and they were permitted to take the donkey's colt and then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments over it and he sat on it and many in the crowd spread their garments on the road ahead of him and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields and Jesus was in the center of the procession and the people all around him were shouting praise God blessings on the one who comes in the name of the Lord blessings on the coming kingdom of our ancestor David praise God in the highest heaven and so Jesus came to Jerusalem and went into the temple after looking around carefully at everything he left because it was late in the afternoon and then he returned to Bethany with the 12 disciples amen this is the triumphant entry but it's it's a fulfillment of prophecy that Jesus would enter Jerusalem on the colt on the young donkey and it's really amazing now uh, you know there's a lot of folklore Uh, surrounding the Easter story. There's a lot of myths that a lot of people think are actually real. And there's a a story that was told many years ago, an actual like cartoon movie that came out. And it's based on, uh, you know, folklore that a lot of people really believe. And, And that movie was very interesting because it was about the donkey that Jesus rode. Uh, uh, into Jerusalem. And in that, that, that tale, in that movie, the donkey loved Jesus so much because the power of Jesus had come on him and made him calm that he actually continued to follow Jesus around for the rest of that week. Uh, leading up to his crucifixion. And what ends up happening is the donkey ends up at the cross, okay, and sees Jesus uh, dying on the cross. And I believe in the movie that the donkey even had tears, you know, uh, and was and was so sad. And in that movie, what ends up happening, and in the myth, what ends up happening is the shadow of the cross comes down onto the donkey and makes a permanent shape of the cross on the donkey. 
And this is interesting because actually, if you will look at any donkey in the world today, you will find that there is the shape of the cross on every donkey in the world today. Now, some people believe that that actually happened because the the shadow of the cross imprinted the cross on the donkey and then that was the first one to ever have that and somehow genetically now all donkeys have it well you and i both know that that's not true you know what ever since donkeys were created they've all had that cross and i'm going to show you right here right now uh, a couple of pictures of the cross that i'm talking about on donkeys guys isn't this amazing that every donkey that has ever lived has this cross on its back isn't that amazing that's how meticulous God is. That is how uh, into giving signs God is. God, from the very beginning of creation, whenever it is that he created the donkeys, uh, you know, they've had a cross on them because from the very beginning, God had planned for Jesus to enter Jerusalem on the back of a donkey. And these donkeys have been marked by the sign of the cross for thousands of years. Isn't that amazing? Now, here's a little side note that I'm going to give you right here. You know, a lot of people believe that Jesus uh, riding on the donkey actually the first time was when Mary rode on a donkey, uh, pregnant with Jesus, going into Bethlehem. The problem is, is that scripture does not actually say that Mary rode on a donkey. You can search your Bible right now, and I know that some of you are going to right now because you've seen pictures of Mary riding on a donkey pregnant your whole life. Like they're in movies, they're in television shows, they're in children's books. Uh, I'm showing you that picture right now. This is what you've seen your whole life. The problem is this is not what the Bible says. All that we know about what the Bible says is that Mary and Joseph, while Mary was pregnant, they traveled to Bethlehem. Is it possible that she rode on a donkey? It is entirely possible. It could have been that she rode on a donkey, but here's the thing. That's not what the Bible says, <laughs> okay? It's not what the Bible says. It doesn't say she didn't ride a donkey, but it doesn't say that she did ride a donkey. And so we have to be careful, guys, to study the Bible for ourselves and not assume these kinds of things. But the one thing that we do know for sure is that as a fulfillment of prophecy— Jesus rode a donkey into Jerusalem in the triumphant entry. Now, my main point here that I want to make today is, guys, is, is literally my title. If God can use a donkey, God can use us. I don't know about you, my friend, but I believe that I have been marked by the Holy Spirit from birth. I believe that I have been marked by the Holy Spirit even from the time that I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I believe that I have been marked by the Holy Spirit as I have spent time in his presence. My goal, my purpose, my destiny is to be someone who picks up my cross and follows Jesus. And so just like that donkey has a cross on it, I have a cross on me. I've counted the cost. I've picked up my cross. I'm following Jesus and I am forever marked with the gospel message. I have fire in my bones. I must proclaim the gospel message even if very often I'm not really that smart, even if very often I'm not really that talented, even if very often I'm not really that wise, I want you to know something, my friend. If God can use a donkey, God can use me. And so I love the fact that God used a donkey in scripture. I love the fact that God made a donkey talk in scripture. Isn't that awesome? I love the fact even more 
that God can help me to talk. I love the fact even more that God can help you to talk. I pray this day that as we ponder on the Easter message, and there's so many other parts of the Easter message, but specifically about the donkey, I pray that as we ponder this, I pray even right now, the power of God to come upon you and to fill you with words and to open your mouth so that you will be one who sows the seeds of the kingdom of God, so that you will be one that is as useful as a donkey for the purposes of the kingdom of God. And I pray a branding of fire. I pray a branding of the Holy Spirit to come upon you and to come upon me and to come upon our church right now. We, may we be marked by the cross. And may we be those that pick up our cross and follow him all the days of our life. I prophesy to you, Gateway Mission Assembly. I prophesy to you, anybody else who's listening in, I pray that you will be a useful utensil in the hands of God. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the the many, many awesome and amazing and cool and interesting things that we can find in your word. And I pray, Lord, that we would all be motivated to be useful to you. And we can say, honestly, that if you can use a donkey, you can use us. Father, I speak your blessing. I speak your power. I speak your presence into every single life right now. And Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I speak your healing touch through Jesus, the great physician, by the power of the Holy Spirit in your presence. I speak healing into the bodies right now. I speak healing into the final finances right now. I speak healing into the relationships right now. I speak healing into the minds right now. I speak healing into the emotions right now. In Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, I pray that there would be a fantastic harvest that would come forth all for your glory during this Easter season and beyond. Now, Father, I release the power of your Holy Spirit to move into every mouth and to loose every tongue to be, to be effective for you. And Lord, I just pray your presence into every room, even for those who are outside right now. I pray your presence to come around and, and shroud everyone wherever they are right now. And Father, I pray your desires into each and every one of our hearts and lives. I pray that your dreams would be our dreams. I pray that your goals would be our, our goals. I pray that we would cling to you and cling to your agenda and find out what your perfect will is for our lives. I bless each and every one with your presence, your power, and your glory. And I do really, really, really impart and pray right now your mark your mark on every single one in Jesus mighty name amen amen and amen I love you guys so much God bless you happy Easter week happy Easter it's an amazing day happy resurrection Sunday may you be resurrected with the power of the Holy Spirit because the Bible says the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is the same power that works powerfully in us. God bless you. Bye.